Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today is day three of the DIY Farmhouse Buffalo Check Mason Jars in yellow. Again, we're going to use the pint size Kerr Mason Jars. Um, there is some white chalk paint. The directions are in the description box down below, as well as some sunbeam yellow paint by Apple Barrel. Um, this is acrylic craft paint. We're going to need our ruler, and I'm also going to be using my tape measure, um, sort of the flexible kind. All right, and of course, you'll need a pencil. <laughs> So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to coat this jar in white chalk paint. Um, if you tuned in um, the first two days, we spray painted the jars with that technique. This one we're going to use the um, homemade chalk paint. Um, if you have chalk paint that you bought at the store, absolutely, you could use it. Um, this is just cheap and I'm cheap, so... <laughs> And you're just going to put one nice coat on the entire jar. Um, if you feel uh, the need to do two, then absolutely go right ahead and do two. Um, I prefer to go back over and fill in the white squares when I'm done um, in case I just have any chips or scratches. But this makes a nice base coat for underneath all of the um, paint that we're about to add. Okay. And for this particular one, I am going to paint the bottom. The one that I do tomorrow, I do not paint the bottom. Um, so what I'm just going to do is rest it on upside down to let it dry. Come back the next day. And once it's all dry and cured, we're going to go ahead and make one inch marks. Now it looks like my ruler is like weird, but I'm just eyeballing um, like I think it's the eight inch mark at the bottom of the nine inch mark at the bottom of the mason jar. And I'm just going up one inch from there. Um, again, this is not an exact science, but you just want to try to wherever you do, wherever you start from, you want to make sure it's the same start point. OK. And we're doing one inch squares because it does work perfectly with the circumference of the jar. OK, so you're just going to mark up one inch. Uh, from the bottom and I'm going to do it on all four sides. What this does is it does help me um, when we're going to go ahead and create the lines it does help um, make the make the lines even. Um, now the line drawing part that we're going to do is um, just something you may have to practice at. Um, it's just something that my dad taught me when we were when you know part of construction where I'm holding the pencil on the mark um, and once I have it firmly in my hand, I'm using my finger and I'm running my finger underneath the jar and I'm keeping the pencil steady at the same, um, you know, the same one inch mark. And I'm just going all the way around the jar um, while I'm holding my hand at the same area. Do you see that? So I'm sort of not putting the pencil up higher or lower than, than I was. And I'm just going to go around um, the whole jar and I'm going to try to hit each one of those tick marks. Um, you can always go back later and um, just f make any corrections if you think something got a little wonky. Um, but this is just a really easy way, um, almost like if you had a compass or a protractor, excuse me. If you had a protractor and you were doing this, um, you know, this is just another way to use your hand. So hold the pencil at the same distance, run your finger along the flat edge and um, you'll see it makes a nice, clean, even line around, okay? Now we're going to freehand paint this, so that's why we want to have complete lines drawn. Um, we want to make sure that it's as even as possible, even if you have to go back with your ruler and measure. Um, you can, again, farmhouse, homemade, DIYs are not meant to be perfect, but if you are a person who prefers the perfection, then go ahead and I'm teaching you like the ways that you can do it. But we're just going to go ahead and eyeball this the best we can. Use that technique to try to keep the lines as straight as possible. Okay. And now for the, um, I want to draw the uh, vertical lines before I paint the horizontal lines. And I want to do that so that I make sure that I don't um, accidentally paint over the lines. Okay. So I'm going to put it in an area that I know that I'm not going to paint. Um, and now this, this, when I use this tape measure, I don't start at zero. I always start at one. I'm not really sure why I do that. Um, but if you want your, um, lines to be perfect, try to use the seam of the jar. If you can still find it, if you haven't painted over it, just to work as a, um, as a vertical, a perfect vertical line. And you can build off of that. 
all right otherwise I'm just eyeballing I'm marking it and then I'm taking um, I'm gonna take a piece of paper and I'm going to use it to create straight lines um, up and down all right so I found my marks and what I like about this is it's just a little piece of cardstock it bends um, with the jar so that I can get the straight line to go all the way from the top to the bottom um, it doesn't go obviously the threads I'm just uh, I'm drawing the threads you know bump 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 against the paper as possible so and then I'm just going to continue to do this all the way around so that we have all of our measurements all right now um, I didn't say in the beginning that we're going to use a piece of sandpaper I also didn't say that we were going to use a piece of paper to um, to uh, draw against but we're going to use sandpaper to distress this jar I um, am going to distress this one and the one tomorrow just to show you the different options of different ways to distress it um, but you don't have to do that that's totally optional if you like that look not everybody likes the distressed look some people like the complete finished look okay now we're going to go ahead and mix our paint color so I'm going to take the um, the apple barrel plain white paint and I'm going to mix in some of this sunbeam yellow um, and what you always want to do is add color to white um, not white to color it'll take way too much white to um, to lessen the pigment of your colored paint as opposed to the other way around you'll use a lot a lot less paint if you darken your white paint all right and we want this to be mid-tone between um, white and the actual yellow color but it's really a matter of personal preference you guys decide how yellow you want it to be how white you want it to be okay so for this jar I decided to do the um, the vertical stripes first um, and there is no rhyme or reason why I always choose to do the horizontal stripes in the past I, I mean not in the past from the other jars there is no necessity to which way you go um, but this one I'm just using a Dollar Tree paintbrush it's nothing fancy um, and I'm just using it um, to create straight lines so how do I do that I load it with about half of a, probably as half the amount of paint that I would need and I push the brush down flat until the edge lines up with the line and then once I have it lined up with the line then I just follow along the edge of the line that's how I get straight lines that's how I can control the paintbrush so here it is again I push down until the brush spreads all the way out so that I can get that nice clean edge um, and then I create straight lines and go back and fill in whatever you need you can always go back and do touch-ups when you do touch-ups I wouldn't press the brush down again I would just use the tips of the brush um, to touch up whatever areas you need okay now another thing that I forgot to do was to protect this jar um, from my table while I was drawing the lines um, I don't care because I was going to distress it anyway but if you are not going to distress it then you want to make sure you put down a paper towel or a, a, a piece of cloth to protect the jar from scratching up on your on your surface okay and now I'm just <laughs> just continuing those lines to the center on the bottom but that's not necessary that's just me being fun all right and then we're gonna wait until it dries and then the next day we're gonna come back and make sure you cover your paint so it stays nice and moist and um, what I do is I make the paint in the lid of these Dollar Tree mason jar candles that are left over and then I screw the jar on um, to keep it fresh um, and what's nice about that is that th it's easy to work um, in the lid uh, really well what's not nice about it is sometimes it, if you leave it too long the paint will seal the jar closed but that just run it under hot water and it'll be fine all right and now we're going to do the um, horizontal lines I guess it really depends on how you hold the jar but when the, when the jar is standing up it's horizontal lines and um, I'm doing um, the way I'm painting it you can either uh, do full strokes and do the whole thing or you can just fill in the areas of the space like of the line that wasn't painted yet um, and that's a matter of personal preference but there's no need to go all the way around um, the whole way it's just an extra paint you're putting two coats on the 
you're putting two coats, believe it or not, on the area that you're going to go put another coat of paint on. So probably best to just fill in the blank spaces. All right. And just like all of the Buffalo check tutorials we've done before, um, your middle color is going to be the horizontal and verticals. Um, and then you're going wherever they overlap is going to be the dark color where um, wherever it's left over um, is going to be the white. OK. Um, and that's just for these jars. Tomorrow we have something not tomorrow. Um, in two days we have something special coming. It's a little different. So um, stay tuned for that. All right. Now. Once that's dry, come back the next day and we're just going to use the yellow straight on this pretty um, sunbeam yellow. It's sort of like a buttercup color. It's not exactly bright, bright. Um, so I liked it for this particular application. Um, but since the yellow is so light compared to the white, um, we just wanted it to stand out a little bit. We wanted to keep it full strength. So straight from the jar. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill in the squares wherever the two lines overlapped. And we're going to pour the paint in the cap since it's straight out of the bottle. And whatever we don't use, we'll go back in the bottle. Um, and then before I started painting yellow, just touch up any imperfections that you want to fix. Okay, anything that might have got smudged or scratched off. Um, you can always touch up. That's why we keep those paint colors the way they are. All right. And now... Um, you want to do this for all of the remaining squares. Um, now, it depends on where you started um, your color lines, um, but you want to go ahead and see if the top ring around the, the neck of the mason jar um, will need any additional paint in the column or row. So if you haven't watched any other tutorials and you really were drawn to the yellow one, um, to do buffalo check, um, what you want to do is the row, um, the rows go left and right, columns go top to bottom. Thank you, Microsoft. Um, but the uh, if a row is going to have a medium color and a and a dark color and a medium color and a dark color, the row above it will have a white and a medium color and a white and a medium color. As long as you make sure that the row um, is always the dark color switch off or the ro the rows are all the same and then the columns are all the same so if you have a column that is dark color then the one that's under it um, will be medium and the one that's under that will be another dark color and then the the column next to it will be the white and medium color um, and you switch off that way okay I think I mentioned it the other day that um, because it started out as a fabric that was woven, um, that's what creates it. So imagine if you had a striped fabric going horizontal and a striped fabric going vertical or striped th threads, really. And when you weave them wherever, um, wherever white went, w wove with white would be all white. Wherever yellow wove with yellow would be all yellow. And wherever white was woven with yellow would be a pale pale yellow and that's where we come up with um, the gingham or the buffalo check okay buffalo check got its name from Woolrich I don't know if, if we've ever talked about the history of buffalo check but the Woolrich company um, created the first red and black plaid buffalo check um, and they named it so uh, it's believed because of where the Woolwich factory was up in New York State um, but basically it's gingham or plaid um, but it's just a very large gingham uh, basically this is gingham on steroids <laughs> okay so once you have all of that uh, done then you want to go ahead and let it dry again and now um, come back the next day and this is where you decide if you would like to distress it at all. So what I like to do to distress it is I like to take my piece of sandpaper and fold it in half so I get a nice crease. And then I go perpendicular to um, the, the raised lettering. And this just helps get the paint right off the edge of the letter and it, it letters. And it allows the, um, the 3D raised um, 
lettering or whatever embossing to um, show out to show up really well okay and we're doing this with the word cur the word mason at the bottom as well as the swirl that goes under it there is actually some um like print right over that swirl but um, it's not very deep and once you add chalk paint to it you can almost not see it at all and then if you want to any of the other areas that you think might have gotten worn away like if this was a really old jar then you can go ahead and do that and there it is I really like this one I hope you guys do too if you have any questions at all please leave them in the comments down below don't forget to share this video with friends and family anybody who might be interested in seeing this technique or any of the techniques from this video's series and um, stay tuned for the next three days where we're going to complete um, the other three colors and if you haven't yet click subscribe and when you do a little bell will pop up when you ring that bell youtube will let you know whenever i upload a new video and don't forget to check out our vlog channel it's in the link in the description box down below and as always you take care god bless and we'll see you next time bye